All right, so uh, these are some videos I've actually been waiting a while to make, and I'm just really excited to finally actually get into, um, you know, really dive into these lessons. So um, let us get started then. Uh, the question that I want to start this with is, um, the course is titled Noob to admin, taking you from a so-called noob to an admin. Now, what separates a noob from an admin? Well, a noob will do maybe a lot of tasks in the graphical interface, you know. They'll add, remove software from the graphical interface, you know, search for things, uh, install packages. Uh, if, they, if they do get into the terminal, it's really light stuff that they're doing. They haven't, you know, sunk their teeth into the terminal. They haven't, uh, they're not, they haven't uh, embraced the terminal as, you know, it's a scary looking thing. It looks like it's from like 1982. Looks way outdated. You know, we've been convinced that, uh, that a pretty graphical interface is what's important. You know, you have uh, Macs with their really pretty graphical interface. Windows has a really pretty graphical interface and even Ubuntu is trying to go that route with the pretty graphical interface and you know this is some outdated old stuff here the terminal but you know the truth is this is where all the power uh, especially on a Linux system lies so this right here is really what separates a noob from an admin this is a uh, this is called a terminal emulator. I come up here, I go to Applications, System Tools, and I clicked on Terminal. Opens this up. A terminal emu uh, emulator is just a program, and the program gives us access to the shell. The shell is also a program, and what the shell does is it takes input from the keyboard, and it passes it to the operating system, to, you know, basically tell the operating system to do this or do that, or, you know, it, uh, it allows you to run commands and whatnot. The default shell in Linux is the born-again shell, bash. So that's what I'm really going to be covering. Um, there are many different kinds of shells. Uh, if I cat the Etsy shells file, it'll show me the different shells I have on this system. Okay, I have uh, Bash and C shell and don't have Corn shell, but uh, on some some systems the, there's the uh, Corn shell. and So I have all these different kinds of shells. Uh, um, they, are, they are different in how they do things. They still give you, give you the same access to the system, but they're just different in how th uh, certain things are done. But uh, we're not going to cover any other shell, really, other than Bash. We might get into the corn shell a little bit, but uh, n not with any depth. Um, so anyway, the first thing we see when we open up the terminal is a, we get a prompt. And at this prompt, this is where we type in our commands. <clears throat> so, for example, I can type in C-A-L, and that'll show me a calendar, and today is... Uh, Monday, November 26th. I can type in date. That'll tell me today's current date, and so on and so forth, right? So this allows us to type in commands and, uh, uh, and uh, also allows us to navigate and do things with the file system. So the file system in Linux is kind of like Windows. It's, it's uh, set up in a hierarchy. Um, the hierarchy is it's it's kind of like a tree and in Windows at the base of your tree at the base of the hierarchy there is uh, the drive so you click on C drive right and it, it, you double click on that and it shows you there's a bunch of folders and uh, there's you know documents and settings and there's a Windows folder and so on and so forth and you click on the Windows folder and now you're in C colon slash windows and then you click on system 32 and now you're in C colon windows system 32 right well the basically kind of like the C drive 
type in cd slash, and I'll get into cd and stuff here in a second, cd slash, type in ls, that lists the contents of the directory that you are in. And uh, uh, we can see I'm in the root uh, directory. This is the uh, root of the entire file system. This is the base of the file system. Kind of like your C drive in Windows with one notable difference, which I'll get into in just a second. So this is the root of the file system, and just like in Windows you have uh, different folders when you go into the C drive, you have different folders in uh, the root of the file system. You've got the bin folder, and the boot, and C group, and so on and so forth, right? And under each one of these folders, so let's say uh, I click on uh, uh, Windows, uh, and here I'm going to click on User, and you have folders in here. And then you have uh, click on bin, and you have in here you have a bunch of files, and maybe you might have more folders, and it goes and goes and goes. So, you know, I'm in. That's the root. That's kind of like C. So slash. I'm in slash user and bin. That's uh, that's uh, I'm two steps deep into the hierarchy, right? So if I go cd slash, that'll take me back to the root folder. Okay. Now, before we get into uh, too much here about the file system, I want to say, first off, I said there was a notable difference between uh, Windows and um, Linux. The notable difference here is that in Windows, you have maybe the C drive, the D drive, and so on and so forth. In Linux, you only have this file system, ls slash, right? And if I want to, let's say I put a CD into my computer, it's not like it goes on the D drive or anything like that. It gets what's called mounted. So basically it gets uh, 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 put into a folder on this file system. So I have a CD in here right now, media, and the CD is called PM Reddit users for some reason. And, uh, um, you know, I have files in, in here. So this is this is a CD. And it's on the root file system under media and PM Reddit users, right? <clears throat> so CD back to slash. So there's no there's no drives. There's no um, you know C drive, D drive, E drive. There's nothing like that. It doesn't uh, it doesn't work like that. Basically if you have another drive, it's going to uh, uh, you are going to access access it through a folder on this uh, file system here. You only have one file system in Linux. So that's a notable difference. The other thing I want to cover is ls. ls lists the contents of a directory. Okay, So if I type in ls, it'll list the contents of the directory that I am currently in. Oftentimes, you'll, it'll say the directory you're currently in right here. But in case you don't know, you can type in pwd. And that'll print to the screen your current directory, the directory you're currently in. So if I cd over to uh, slash user slash local slash bin, and I type in pwd, it doesn't say the full directory, it just says I'm in bin. If I want to know the full directory, type in pwd, and it says I'm in slash user slash local slash bin. So cd, it's kind of how you navigate the file system, it's how you drive around it, okay? So I was in the root directory, and I wanted to get to user local bin. I wanted, This was my destination. I changed directory to user local bin, and type in pwd, and user local bin is my present working directory now. You don't have to type in pwd. It just displays it. OK. And I'm wondering, OK, what, what, what files, what folders, what stuff is in here? Type in ls, ls, sorry, and that will list the contents of the directory. There's nothing in here right now, so it comes back with nothing. So I go to cd slash etsy, type in ls, and it'll list, oh, here's a bunch of files, and these are directories, and you know, so on and so forth. And it's nice and colorful, right? OK, so cd back to the root directory here, right? And let's go over what directories are on this file system, ls. So ls uh, display the contents of the root directory, and we can see there's a bunch of directories in here. We have a directory called bin. Bin 
is for innocuous commands. And what do I mean by innocuous commands? I mean they are commands that uh, any user on the system can run and they are not going to give the user access to messing up the system. They're not system administration commands or anything like that. These are innocuous commands. Now, slash bin though stores commands that are necessary necessary to to uh, to the to the system okay so let's say you have a serious problem with your system and you have to boot into what's called single user mode and you may not get access to a lot of the stuff in here okay but you will have access to the contents of this directory because these are necessary to troubleshoot and to fix any problems if uh, anything should arise okay so that's a necessary directory um, of, of basically system commands these are these are installed with the system when I install a, a secondary package such as let's say I install VLC movie player it's not going to go into bin it's not a system command it's not necessary for the system okay so we have another directory called boot Notice I didn't put a forward slash in front of boot. That's because I'm in that directory, so I can just cd to it from there. But let's say I tried to cd to bin. It's going to say, oh, no such file or directory. That's because that is not a directory in slash boot, which is my present working directory. That's an ad uh, a directory in slash, which is the root of the file system, and I can do that, right? Let's go back to boot. Okay. Boot. This is another important uh, um, directory here. It is. It contains. Um, this is the Linux kernel. Okay, and this is uh, this is the initial RAM disk over here. And the the uh, the grub bootloader. And what these files are for is uh, they're for getting the system to boot up. Okay. Oftentimes, if you have problems with your system and it won't boot, uh, it's going to be something in here, and you're going to have to troubleshoot. You know, maybe uh, maybe a new kernel was installed, and it's trying to boot a new kernel, and for some reason there's something wrong. Um, this is this is really important. This is uh, you know when your system boots up, this is where it looks. Okay, and you may have a menu. Uh, you installed a bootloader called Grub when you set up Linux, and you have a a, a menu that gets displayed to you on boot, and it, it'll say sometimes it'll say press any key to enter the menu, and you can press a key and it'll show you. Uh, it'll say uh, what do you want to boot? Do you want to boot this or do you want to boot this? And it may say Windows. This uh, this file is uh, the file it looks to for what's going to be on that menu. So that's your bootloader configuration file for your bootloader. Okay, now we have cgroup directory. Uh, cgroup directory is kind of new, more technical. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, well, as, as I've worked with it thus far, it's related to networking and, uh, and whatnot and shaping bandwidth on servers. Um, not going to get into that just yet and might not ever get into it at all. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll just skip that one and we'll go to dev. So if we look at dev, there's a bunch of strange looking files in here. And what these are, are literally devices that are attached to my computer. Um, Linux has kind of this idea that everything is a file. Well, slash dev slash SDA, that's my hard drive. Strange, huh? slash dev slash sda1 and sda2 these are partitions on my hard drive okay um, an example of this is let me show you a command it's called cat cat slash etsy slash password what does this do this is a file etsy password okay it's the file is called password and it's located in the etsy directory and cat just displays the contents of that file to my screen it dumps them out to my screen Okay, now if I come into, if I cd to slash dev slash input, let's see, there's a file in here called mice. Now I'm going to display the contents of that file to the screen. Cat mice. What a, what a nice command. So I'm going to cat that file, right? 
oh, it doesn't seem to be anything in there, until I move my mouse and a bunch of junk starts getting displayed to the screen as I'm moving my mouse around. This is literally the file as I move my mouse around that communicates with the, the kernel and tells the kernel what I'm doing. So these uh, files in here are basically representative of the devices attached to my computer. Okay? So CD back to slash and we have Etsy. We looked at that a little bit. So CD to Etsy and this is system-wide configuration files for services that are on the system, uh, for you know how the system runs, how the system works. For example, there's a file in here called rsyslog.conf. With this file, I can configure what the system, what's get, what gets logged on the system, where it gets logged to, um, so on and so forth. Right? Um, we have other files in here. Let's see, what's another good one? Directory colors, you know, I can control what colors uh, 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 are the default for direct doing when you uh, display the directories. Um, network manager, there's configuration files for the network in there. Uh, ah, CD, Etsy, sysconfig, network, dash scripts. These are configuration files to configure my network adapters. This is my wireless adapter here. This is my Ethernet adapter. So if I cat, remember that just displays the contents to the screen. If I cat if config eth0, it says uh, device is eth0. It says the boot protocol is DHCP, which means get a, get a IP, an IP address from the DHCP server. Um, it says on boot, no, don't bring it up on boot, so I have to manually bring it up, and so on and so forth. And you know, I could, I could, uh, if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to, if I had a static IP address, I could say IP adder equals 192.168.1.20 netmask equals 255.255.255.0, so on and so forth. And this is the configuration file for my network interface. And it is under, remember, present working directory. It tells me the present working directory. It is in a, in a folder called sysconfig and another folder in sysconfig called network scripts that exists in the Etsy directory. Um, and Etsy uh, is the configuration files for pretty much everything on the system. So let's go to CD back to the root directory, CD slash ls and look at uh, let's see what's next home home kind of like documents and settings in windows uh, if i create a user on the system typically they get a directory under home it would be like slash you know uh, home slash username and that is their home directory and uh, you know when they create files download files whatever they do they, they do most of their work in their home directory so, you know, they uh, say download download a bunch of pictures off of uh, some website. Uh, those pictures are saved into their home directory. Okay? So it's just a place for users to store their stuff. Uh, lib and lib64. I have lib64 because I'm running a 64-bit system. These are shared libraries, and they're used by programs in bin and uh, programs in sbin. And I'll get to sbin in a second. Um, they're shared libraries, and you can kind of think of them like uh, uh, Windows DLL files. Okay, so they're libraries used by programs, um, system programs. We have a lost and found directory. Hopefully, you don't ever have to go in there. Um, you have a file gets corrupted. Uh, whatever it gets thrown into this directory and there's a file system checker it's kind of like a check disk in Windows and it'll try and recover files from from this directory media talked a little bit about mounting things so like I said I have a CD here it's called PM reddit users uh, and uh, I, I, I put the CD in and it mounted it uh, to the media directory and basically that uh, is a place where you know I put a USB key in or a CD and 
they get mounted there. Miscellaneous and net, they're also related to mounting. Um, they're related to a thing called auto mounter, which we'll cover in some detail. But uh, let's say I mount a network drive. You know how uh, you have network drives um, in Windows. You can go to like network neighborhood or whatever and browse your network. Well, in Linux, you can you know uh, mount a network drive and it uh, it, it it could be mounted here, um, set up by a thing called auto mounter. Mount. This is another mount point, kind of legacy. But uh, I still use it. I mean, maybe because I've been, I'm I'm kind of legacy. But uh, so if I have, say, I have a NTFS drive, a Windows drive, right? And I I could mount like slash dev slash sdb one uh, slash mount slash Windows. Okay, and I uh, uh, in this folder mount Windows. I would cd to that, and I'm in my uh, Windows drive, right? So it's kind of a place where you can just mount things. Opt. This is for uh, optional software. Um, I don't see it used too much anymore, but uh, basically, if you install a large package, let's say you install some big like um, Oracle database program or something, it might create a uh, slash opt slash Oracle slash you know uh, bin for the binary files and create this uh, kind of a kind of like a program files in Windows actually trying to relate this to Windows as much as possible at this point. And I'll stop doing that in a bit because I don't think it's very, very good to relate it to Windows constantly. Uh, the PROC file system. This is very interesting and will be covered in huge amount of detail later. Uh, let's uh, look at the cat PROC CPU info. So we cat that file. And it's uh, it's uh, tells me about my CPU. I've got a genuine Intel, and it's a Core 2 Duo, uh, 2.2 gigahertz, and it's got two cores. So this is the first core. This is the second core. Uh, it tells me the flags. If you set up KVM, you had to look at this and see if uh, uh, the VMX or SVM flags existed. And you know, as you can see, I have an Intel CPU, and the VMX flag exists. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, proc proc directory, uh, the files in there are used by the kernel, uh, basically. And if you look at them, if you you know look at the files in here, you can see how uh, how the kernel is uh, interfacing with your system. Okay, you can kind of see how the kernel sees your system. Um, but yeah, this is going to be covered in a lot of depth because this is a really important directory. Actually, there's a well, one in here called uptime, cat uptime, and it, what, it's all crazy, right? And type in uptime, which knows how to translate that to, oh, I've been up uh, not very long at all. So, um, so yeah, so that's uh, that's a uh, proc. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? CD back to slash and root, root, right there. Now, I've been saying, oh, here's the root directory. Here's the root directory. This is the root directory. This is literally a directory called root. Uh, this is this is root's home directory. You know how when you create a user, they get a directory under home often? Typically, that's the behavior. Well, root has their own, very own home directory, and that's this right here. If I say cd to root's home directory, I never call this the root directory. The root directory is this. This is root's home directory. Very different. This is where... When you're root, you know, files get saved here. Let's say I go to Firefox and I download something, it's going to go into this directory. Um, this is my little sandbox, my little playground as root, okay? Where I save files and whatnot. SBIN. These are system binaries, um, and they are used by system administrators. So remember, bin? Bin, these are innocuous commands, can be run by anyone on the system. SBIN, these are not. These are run by pretty much exclusively uh, root. Um, they they are so like IP tables. I can change the firewall basically how uh, how the firewall runs. Check config. I can turn services on and off. You know I don't want any user on my system to be able to do these things. So these are commands uh, pretty much accessed uh, by uh, the administrator. 
they are installed when you install the system and they are as well very important commands say you have uh, something go wrong with the system these are very important commands to getting the system back up and running okay uh, SE Linux that's where um, SE Linux stores uh, stuff in here. This is for controlling SE Linux. Um, SE Linux is, uh, stands for Security Enhanced Linux. It's a, um, a very in-depth system, and we are going to be covering that in a lot of depth. But, uh, so this is, uh, this is for controlling SE Linux, and we'll get into this one later. Serve, let's say I have a, an FTP server, and I have, like, let's say, serve slash FTP, right? And in there, I have a bunch of files that when someone connects to my FTP server, they get. Let's say I have a serve, uh, a web server, and serve www, and I have the noob to admin dot com domain. Uh, um, this is basically uh, for stuff you're serving out to the um, uh, people online, more or less. That's pretty much what it's used for. Uh, the sys directory, a lot like proc really um, interesting directory uh, not as interesting as proc I wouldn't say but uh, again something that uh, we're gonna go into in great detail um, so if I CD to sys and CD slash sys slash bus hmm what am I doing oh sorry sys slash bus slash PCI slash uh, devices and I come over here and I see a bunch of folders with numbers uh, these are basically devices that are connected to my system and I can CD to to that and there's a bunch of stuff in here and I can control uh, the way uh, <clears throat> say what a network cards doing there's a lot of things I can control here but that's another one we're going to have to explore in great detail. So cd back to slash. Temp. This is a directory where uh, you know temporary files are stored. Uh, sometimes I'll cd to temp and I'll uh, you know create a test file or I'll uh, if I'm downloading something and I, uh, I you know don't want to keep it or whatever I'll just you know download a file into temp and and whatnot. So cd back to slash. Uh, user. User's huge. There's a bunch of stuff in user. Um, it, this contains all the programs and libraries like we covered in here. These are programs and libraries and more programs. These are system ones. These are programs and again libraries and more programs. Uh, but uh, these are used by the users on the system. These are installed by the users. They're not they're not necessary for the system. So if my system goes down and I don't have access to this stuff, no big deal, right? Uh, so if I cd to bin and my present working directory is user bin and I uh, do an ls, bunch of stuff in here, you know, and uh, we can see, for example, Java's in here, uh, VirtualBox stuff is in here. Um, I'm using a GTK record my desktop to record these videos. That's in here, you know. Um, if I were to look, Firefox would be in here. Yeah, there's Firefox, right? So these are these are this is a place for programs I install, uh, programs that are not necessary to the system, programs that uh, are above and beyond what uh, uh, you know the base Linux is, right? Uh, the you know user Etsy contains configuration files for you know different things um, in here there's nothing in there now um, <clears throat> let me see local uh, this is uh, contains like Let's say I build a program from source. Okay, I can I can I can install things in many different ways. I can use yum, which is part of my system. It's a part of CentOS. It's a way of installing things in CentOS. But I could also go out and download the source code for it and build it. If I build it from source, it'll often go into user local. 
so use your local bin, use your local s bin, and so on and so forth. If I build it from, uh, if I do a, like a yum install Firefox, it's going to um, go into just user local, right? <clears throat> so another directory in here that's kind of important is uh, share. And in here, there's just a bunch of stuff, right? And so if I cd to system config, oops, system config firewall in here, and I do an ls, and there's just a bunch of stuff in here, and these are Python scripts. And uh, let me see. Most important in here is doc. My present working, oops, present working directory is user share doc. Do an ls in here, and there are a bunch of folders again. And if I say cd to network manager folder um, directory, and my present working directory is now user share doc network manager. Do an ls, list the files in here, and I have documentation on network manager. Vi this readme file, and it you know it's the documentation that comes with network manager. Um, it's it's a it's kind of a lot of stuff to navigate in here, and I have never found a really good way to navigate it, but if you ever get a chance and want to look around, there's a lot of documentation in here. A lot of stuff you can read, you know, uh, wireless tools, uh, WPA, so if, you're, um, if your access point, your router uses uh, WPA uh, for authentication, you know, this is uh, this might be of interest to you, and so on and so forth. Xorg is, you know, this graphical interface and stuff. So, important stuff. All right, user share doc. So now we have var. I call it var. You might call it var. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. These are files whose content varies while the system is running. So, for example, example cd var log. There's a file in here called messages. Well, this file is constantly being written to as the system is, is running. If I tail it, you know, um, it's, uh, you know, something may show up in here. See, boom. These files are constantly varying as the system is running. So that's what those are. Okay. So that is the file system. That's a pretty basic introduction there to the file system. Now, we've uh, discussed CD a little bit, and we discussed LS, and even a little bit into CAT, but CD and LS and PWD. PWD, I show my present working directory, which is currently root, right? Now, let's say I CD to slash temp, OK? And my present working directory is now temp. Okay, and I want to cd back to root. cd space dash will take me to my previous current working directory. Okay, so my current directory is root. I want to go back to temp cd space dash, cd space slash etsy slash dbus1, and let's say go back to temp cd space dash. That's just a little shortcut. Okay, cd alone, that'll take me back to my home directory. So let me ask you to Avant Garden, right? And CD over here to temp. And my present working directory is temp. So I'm, I'm currently uh, logged in as Avant Garden. I'll explain SU here in a second. So I'm now in temp. And I go CD, CD alone. And it takes me to home Avant Garden. So whatever user you are logged into in the system, it's going to take you to your home directory when you do CD alone. Now I'm logged in as root again. I'm root again. Who am I? That'll tell me who I am. I am root. And I want to cd to Avant Garden's directory, cd space tilde Avant Garden. And that will take me to Avant Garden's home directory. cd tilde username is another shortcut. And that will take you to the user's home directory specified by username. So cd. Um, space dot dot that will take me well here my present working directory is home avant garden right cd dot dot that will take me one directory up so if i come over here to cd user share doc and network manager right 
and I want to go back to user bin, I can see say cd dot dot. So that takes me from this folder, network manager, which I'm currently in, and puts me in this one. Okay. Now I hit tab twice, and it'll show me all the stuff that's in the doc directory, because I could cd dot dot to um, let's say Perl. I could cd dot dot to this folder, and now I just went from user share doc network manager to one directory higher on the hierarchy, and then Perl, so user share doc Perl. Now I want to go to something that's in just user. So go back one directory, that'll take me to doc. Back another directory, that'll take me to share. I hit tab twice, that'll show me the contents of share. I don't want to display that though. Back one directory, and that will take me to user. Okay, hit tab, and it'll show me the folders in user. So I went, I went from uh, user share doc Perl to dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash bin, and that takes me to user bin. So dot dot, whenever you make a directory on the system, a two directories get created. So let me let me just show you this real quick. This directory is empty, but if I do, I'm going to get into flags, options, and arguments here in a second. But if I do an ls-a, that'll show hidden uh, hidden files and folders. Every time you create a directory, the dot dot directory gets created and the dot directory gets created. Okay, the dot directory means the current directory, means the directory that the dot directory is in. So dot, in this case, equals slash home slash avant garden, right? And the dot dot directory in this case, in this case, equals one directory higher on the hierarchy, which would be home. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, an example of how this could be useful: if I want to copy a file, say I want to copy slash etsy slash password. This is the file, password, it's in the Etsy directory, and I want to copy it to the current directory I am in, which is home slash avant garden. Okay? Instead of having to type home avant garden, which would work, that would work, it would copy the file over, I can just type in dot, because dot means the directory I am currently in. And now if I list the contents here, I will see that it copied the password file here. So that's the use of dot. If I wanted to copy it to the home directory, I could say dot dot. And now I do an ls on dot dot, and I see that in the home directory, there's Bill's home directory, Frank, George, Karen, Avant Garden, and there's password. Okay. So that is um, the dot dot and, and so on. <laughs> so the other command that we covered at this point is ls. Now, ls, if I do ls, just ls alone, it'll list the contents of my present working directory, in this case, home avant garden. So ls, and I can see I've got password, right? Well, I can also supply flags to ls. ls-a will list all contents. If it's... Uh, if it's got a dot in front of it, it means it's hidden. And ls-a will show basically hidden files and folders. Okay? Uh, ls-l, that'll show information about the file. Okay? It's a kind of a detailed output. And I'm going to go over that in just a second. Uh, ls-lh, that'll show the size in human readable format. Okay? Let's cd on over to Etsy where you can get a better idea of some of this stuff ls-lt, this will sort the files by the time they were last modified, okay? <clears throat> so this is the oldest file in the directory, and way up here at the top, that's the newest, okay? That was the one most recently modified. Now, if I do ls-lrt, that reverses the sorting, okay? So it reverses it, 
and makes the newest at the bottom and the oldest at the top. The other things I can do here is ls-ls, that'll sort it by size, smallest file at the bottom, largest file at the top, ls-l, reverse it again with the r, s, we'll sort it by size with the largest at the top and the, um, the smallest at the bottom. Um, there are many, many, one second, sorry about that, my, uh, I have a mic that sits on my head and it kind of hurts, so I had to adjust it, it's kind of, I gotta get like a padding for it or something, it just kind of digs into your head, it's not a very good design. Um, if you say you like to see, uh, directories, a, a difference between you know, your directories and whatnot, um, ls-lf, it'll show you a slash after your directories and, and so on and so forth. So it kind of differentiates there, it shows you a slash, oh this is a directory and so on. Um, I could just do ls-f and it'll show me not long output, it doesn't show me detailed output, but it shows me a slash after the directory, a little at sign, that'll be explained here in a minute, but, and so on, right? Um, so there's a lot of different flags that go to, uh, to these commands. So this is a flag, or um, some people say an option, and this is an argument. So let's say I'm uh, CD, remember that just takes me back to my root directory, or my home directory, I mean. Uh, if I, uh, if I do an ls, it's going to show me the contents of my home directory. But I can supply an argument, and I can say, show me the contents of Etsy. I don't have to be in Etsy, just show me the contents of Etsy, right? So that's an argument. Now I can put options to the argument. ls-l Etsy, right? I want uh, uh, details about it. Okay, so I do that, and it shows me the contents, it shows me details about the contents of the directory. Say I'm interested in the information about the directory itself, ls-ld etsy, and that'll show me the details about the directory itself. <clears throat> so that's the ls command, and here in a little bit you're going to figure out how to get more information, find out, because there's a lot more flags to this command. And, you know, maybe you want to explore the command yourself, so here in a minute you'll get that information. But before I get into that, I want to explain uh, the, you know, what this, um, this long listing, what this all, well, all this stuff means, okay? So, this is the type of file. This first one is the type of file. I'm going to minimize this because I this is kind of cut off on my screen. So this D means it's a directory. This dash means it's a regular file. This L, it means it's a symlink. Symlinks will be explained in a little bit. Uh, there are other types. For example, if I were to do an ls-l slash dev, character device, come up to a hard drive, block device, and so on and so forth. So the first bit is going to tell us, um, you know, basically what, uh, what, uh, what it is, a, a, a regular file, a directory, so on, right? <clears throat> Let me do ls slash etsy, or ls dash l slash etsy again. Okay. Now, someone owns this file, a user on the system owns this file, a group on the system owns this file. This tells me what user owns the file. This tells me what group owns the file. Okay? So if I were to look at uh, um, slash home slash Frank, I'd see that Frank, the user, and the Frank group owns these files, right? This bit right here, these three, tell me what permissions the user who owns the file has. In this case, they have read and write. The permissions that they can have are read, write, and execute. If they have execute permission, like in this case, a directory, it means that they can uh, run it like a program. Directories have execute permission, and I'll tell you about that here in a minute. But uh, So this is the permissions for D. 
the owner, the user owner. This next set, these next three ones, are the permissions for the group. Okay, so anyone in this group, root group, has these permissions to the file. And the last set <coughs> are the permissions for everyone else on the system. Not anyone who is not the user and not part of the group, everyone else on the system. So Frank here, he's not in the root group and he's not the root user. He has these permissions. He has read permissions to this file here. Okay, This is how many links there are to the file. That will be explained in a bit. This is the user owner. This is the group owner. This is the file size, the date last modified, and the file name. So that's the ls-l output. Now, we can get more information on a file by typing file followed by what file we want information on. So let's say we want information on the Etsy password file. Type in file Etsy password, and it tells me this is a text file. In my home directory in root home directory, I have a file. It's an RPM file. I type in file slash root slash apple you know, so on and so forth, dot RPM, and it tells me this is an RPM file. Because, um, uh, let's say, uh, let's say in my home directory I just have a thing called Apple, and I'm like, what is Apple? I can type in file Apple. It doesn't go off of the extension, and it tells me Apple is an RPM file, okay? So I didn't know what kind of file that was. Let's say it's just called Apple, and I'm like, what is this thing? And it says, oh, okay, Apple is an RPM file. Um, we looked at user bin Firefox earlier. So if I say file, actually, I'll just say file slash bin slash CP, and it's going to say uh, it's an executable file. Okay. Uh, file slash bin slash D message. Same thing. It's an executable file. File slash bin or slash user slash bin slash Firefox. Script, shell script, text, executable. So it's going to tell us a little bit about the file. So if you're interested in a file, just type in file fo followed by the file name. Now, earlier I showed you how to cat the Etsy password file, right? Now, I have a, a, a log file, we took a look at it earlier, called uh, in Verilog, called Messages. Let's say I want to look at that file. I don't want to edit it, I just want to look at the content of it. I can cat it, and it's just going to start dumping a bunch of stuff to my screen way too fast for me to read. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there's another way to look at files on the system. If I type in less messages, I now have what's called a pager. So I can look through this file, hit the down arrow, that'll take you down in the file, hit the up arrow, you can go back up. You're not editing it, okay? Hit the space bar, that'll take you to the next page, hit the B, the B key, that'll take you back a page, right? Say I want to search for something, I want to search for etho, type in, let me, let me get this back, type in forward slash etho, finds etho, hit n, that'll take me to the next instance of it, right? Say I want to quit, just hit q. So less is called a pager and it will allow you to navigate through a file without actually opening it to edit it, okay? Now let us create a test directory, so we're gonna come over to root, okay? Now we want to make a directory, okay? And we're going to make this directory, and it's going to be called test. Okay, make directory test. That's how we make a directory. Make directory, and then space the directory name. Okay. Now, if I look at the contents here, I see that test is a directory in here. Okay. CD to test. My present working directory is slash root slash test. Right. Now, in here, I want to make directory test one, and in test one I want to make test two and then I want to make test three inside test two right I hit that and I hit enter and it comes back and it says cannot create directory test one test two test three well it's not going to create uh, it's going to it can only create one directory at a time unless you supply the dash p flag okay 
So now I do it, and it'll create. I cd into test1, and in test1, there's test2. I cd into test2, and there, there's test3. cd into test3, and my present working directory is slash root, slash test, slash test1, slash test2, slash test3. <clears throat> I want to make uh, so I want to make uh, three directories in here A, B, C, and I also want A, B, C. You might be like, "What? Wait a second! How can you have directories named the same thing?" Linux is case sensitive, so if I make a directory called dog, it's not going to be the same as the directory dog, and it's not going to be the same as the directory D capital O G. Those are all three different directories. Okay, so let me remove. Uh, dog. Notice I supplied three arguments to make the directory. I can supply three arguments to remove the directory. Okay, so when I make a directory, I can say make this directory, and it's separated by space. Make this directory, this directory, this directory, this directory, and this directory, and so on and so forth. So you can make a bunch of directories at one time. So remove directory dog 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 dog. Right? <clears throat> okay. So I've got A, lowercase a, capital A, lowercase b, capital B, lowercase c, capital C, right? So that's uh, that's how I make uh, I make that. Now, um, I say say I want to copy some files. I've got uh, some files. I've got like Etsy password. I want to copy Etsy password, and I want to copy root slash apple, and I want to copy temp slash yum dot log okay and I want to copy those to lowercase a directory okay so everything I want to copy right here and as soon as it gets a directory it's gonna say oh okay you want to copy multiple things to this directory so I'm copying those all to a I go to a my present directory is root test test one test two test three a list the files and I copied those files in. Now earlier, I removed the, the dog directories I created by doing an rmdir. Now when I try that, rmdir a, it cannot remove that directory because it is not empty. Okay, rmdir removes a directory if it is empty, if there's nothing exists in there. So if I want to remove this, I do an rm space dash r a. Descend into the directory it asks me? Yes. Remove this? Yes. Remove this? Yes. Remove this? Yes. Remove directory a? Yes. Okay. Look. Lowercase a is gone. Let's make it again. Make directory a. <clears throat> now, let's uh, cd back to a copy etsy password to a remember the dot just means the current directory we are in okay so now if we ls we've got the password file right and i'm like okay <clears throat> i want to make a backup of this file copy password to password dot back i just made a copy of this file so if i if i cat password right I get all that junk, cat password dot back, I get the junk again. They're the same files, ls dash l, they're the same size and everything like that. Okay? So um, I look at uh, slash home slash frank, and I see that home slash frank, uh, let me do an ls dash l, he's got a nice file over here called file one. Okay? It's owned by Frank and it's uh, owned by the group Frank and these are the permissions on it, right? Well, <clears throat> if I copy slash home slash Frank slash file one to my present directory, do an ls dash l, hmm, different permissions and it's owned by root. Well, that's quite strange, right? Didn't want that, let's say. Let's say I didn't want that. I want to preserve. Uh, uh, the permissions on the file and the owner and everything like that. Copy dash a. It's called archive mode. Slash home slash Frank. File one to here. Okay, and it's going to say 
do you want to override it? And I say yes. And I'll explain to you why it says that here in a bit. But And I say yes. And now I do an ls-l. Because I did the a flag, it kept all the permissions. It kept all the attributes um, related to the file. So that is copying a file. Oh, I, I say I want to... Uh, I, I want to copy uh, Frank's whole directory over here. Copy home Frank to here, right? And it's going to say, hey, can't do that. It's omitting it. It's a directory. Copy dash R, recursive, home Frank to here. And now I've got the Frank directory here. Dash R just says, take the directory and copy it, right? And all the contents that are in the directory, CD to Frank, Got uh, I've got that here, all right? and look at the permissions. They're different than what's in home frank. Uh, remove, uh, <clears throat> remove it. Remember how it asked me earlier, are you sure you want to descend into the directory? Are you sure you want to remove this file? Are you sure you want to remove the directory? Dash F flag forces it. Says just don't ask me, just remove it. Uh, let's copy dash AR slash home slash frank to here. Now if I CD, oh, if I look, Frank is back, ls-l, it's owned by Frank, the permissions are, have all been kept the same, and come into Frank and do an ls-l, and we can see that all the permissions, all the attributes associated with it have been kept the same, right? Now, uh, let's say <clears throat> I create a file called file1 in here, right? And, oh, I've got a file called file1 in here. Let me remove that file. File1, remove file1, yes, remove it. And uh, I create a file, touch, that just creates an empty file. If the file already exists, it just updates the uh, last, uh, I believe the last access time, actually, not the last modified. But So create a file called file1. And the file's timestamp is November 26, 2103, right? Come into the Frank directory, and it has a directory, uh, file called file1, and it's got November 26, 236, okay? So this is a newer file than um, this file. So if I come over here and I say copy, f uh, or actually I come back to Frank and I say copy file1 to one directory up, which would be this directory, and I use a dash u flag, and I come back over here, I cat the contents of file 1, and I cat the contents of the file 1 I tried to copy over, hmm, they're not the same. Why didn't it copy it? The dash u flag is a nice way to say copy only files that either do not exist in this directory or are newer than their existing counterparts. So it didn't copy file one from inside the Frank directory to this file one, because this file one is newer than the file one that's inside the Frank directory. If the file, uh, file one inside Frank directory was newer than this file one, it would have copied it over. It's dash u, update it, right? Okay. Say I want to rename file one. Move file one to file two. LS, file one is now named file two. Let's say I want to move file one to the temporary directory. Move file one to temp. Oh, that's right, I just named it to file two. Move file two to temp, okay? Do an ls-l on, actually let's uh, sort it by the newest. Uh, ls-lrt on temp. And right down here, we see that the newest created file in here is file2, which I just moved over. Uh, remember the copy-u flag? Uh, only copy files that don't exist or are newer than the files that do exist. Move has the same flag. Only move files that don't exist or you know, um, uh, are newer than the files that are already existing there. <clears throat> okay, let's go over something else. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, 
we're in the A directory, right? Root, test, test 1, test 2, test 3, A. Let's remove everything in here. Remove star. And it's going to say, can't remove Frank. It's a directory. Why? Because we didn't supply the dash R flag to recursively remove it. So remove this file, remove that file, and we look in here and we still have Frank. Remove dash R and F Frank. Okay. <clears throat> Let's create a bunch of empty files in here. Uh, touch dog, dog, touch dog cat, um, A, B, C, A, B, C, uh, A, B, 1, 2, 3, um, 1, file, 2, file, <clears throat> um, A, X, C, D, A, X, uh, A, Z, C, D, A, Z, V, D, Okay, now we got a whole bunch of strange files in here. Why on earth would I do that? Now, <clears throat> let me show you something. ls, sorry, ls a star. That's going to match every file that starts with an a and is followed by any character and any amount of characters, okay? Let's say I have, let's touch one more file just called AB. So do an ls a star, it matches AB. Do an ls a question mark, that's going to match any file that starts with an A and is followed by a single character. We can say two characters. Okay. Notice that, uh, that uh, this matched um, ABC. Um, but not AB, because I'm saying it starts with A, has a character, and